What's going on, everybody? This is your host, Sean Johnson from Benchminer Hockey, and welcome to episode number three. And uh, today we actually have head coach of the Binghamton Black Bears, Mr. Gary Gill. Gary, thank you for coming on and talking with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. So um, I see that they announced that you were the new head coach of the Black Bears on July 22nd. Um, were you actually, I know you were announced head coach that day, but were you actually hired prior to that? Uh, right around that time. Yeah. I mean, right around the same time. Maybe, maybe a week before it or so. Gotcha. Well, we're going to talk all things Binghamton Black Bear hockey, but before we get into the good stuff, I'm just kind of curious um, about the hiring process. I feel like that's something that isn't really talked about much. Um, so my first question is, how does one apply to be a head coach for a team in FPHL? Do you kind of pursue the club or do the clubs pursue you? How does that work? Well, I think it, I think it's a mix of both. Um, you know, uh, you got to be persistent uh, as a coach. If you're after something, like I'm a very forward person when it comes to that. I make sure that uh, I'm following her along the leagues, all the leagues. You know, when I was in the coast, did the same thing. Uh, when I was in the SP, did the same things. You got to keep pushing and be persistent. At the same breath, you know, uh, you're. My record speaks for itself now, thank goodness. Uh, I was able to do some really nice things in juniors and pro when I was coaching there. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a I, – I, I do believe that Andreas knew that I was interested in the program already. Um, I just didn't go uh, overboard pursuing that because I they still had a coach at the time. So I didn't know what their plans were. But uh, eventually um, Andreas uh, reached out to me. And uh, when he did reach out to you, uh, was it like a, were you already like actively looking for a position as a head coach with other clubs or were you just kind of already set on that one? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I had, I had tried in a couple different places and, uh, you know, it, some things didn't work out. Uh, mm -hmm. I was involved in a couple other interviews with a couple other teams. Um, no answer had been given yet. And then when Andreas uh, reached out to me, um, this is a place I, I really wanted to come to. And uh, once I was offered that position after, you know, many phone calls and uh, I, I don't want to say negotiations, but many phone calls and and uh, just the conversations to make sure we were going to be on the same page, page as far as how we wanted to the direction that I wanted to take the team and make sure that uh, that's the same direction Andreas wants. I, I see. And uh, what was your what was the main attraction for Binghamton? What made you really want to go there of all places? Well, I mean, uh, it's a rich hockey town. Like the tradition mm -hmm. here is huge, from the Binghamton Senators, from the Dusters, you know, uh, to the Binghamton uh, to the Devils. You know, it it's always had hockey here, and um, you can't beat a hockey rich tradition town. Uh, if you're going to coach a hockey team, that's where you want to be. You want to be where the fans are going to support it and they love their hockey. They understand their hockey. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've watched many games last year for, in Binghamton and the fan support um, is, is amazing. And I love that because I like to be in the community and, and get out in the community and work with the community a little bit. I like our players to do the same thing. Um, and just seeing the interaction between the players and the fans in between periods when they would go off the ice or at the end of the game, um, you know, that it makes it very appealing for a coach to see that they have town support. Yeah, absolutely. Even just watching the games online, like I've been doing, um, I haven't been to a Binghamton game yet, but watching them online, it, it's my favorite broadcast. They, they make it exciting. It's interactive. I love it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rob did a great job here last year. You know, he's had, <laughs> he, he was one of the best ones for sure. I mean, he did years with the, the Devils here, and um, there's, what can you say, the production put on from the entire staff from Rob uh, all the way down uh, to the ticket girls you know they they all work mm -hmm. really hard to to put a great product uh that if you're viewing online that you're getting a good you know you're getting a good sense of the game you get excited when you watch it um you know so uh that's that's a tough job and rob did an amazing job with it yeah great job there in binghamton with the broadcast crew um and back to the interview process which i was asking about before um when you said andreas reached out to you directly um is it like a multi-interview or multiple interview process was it just with just one how, how did that first meeting go well uh i yeah i mean i was on the phone with andreas and um 
um, and Don at the time, uh, the commissioner of the league reached out first. And, you know, we had, like we said, we had a one main conversation and then we had multiple phone calls after that mm -hmm. at length, you know, like, um, you know, when you, when you take over a program, who do you, re who do you answer to? Um, you know, what kind of goals do you have set? I have my own goals. I want to make sure that uh, I'm producing a winning hockey team and, you know, I want to, I want to be bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, maybe the other guy was more finesse. Uh, you know, um, I just wanted to make sure that throughout our conversations and there were multiple, um, I wouldn't say the interview process was multiple interviews. I think it was making sure that I was the right fit to come to Binghamton. Okay. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And why do you think that they chose you? Why were you the, the top choice? <laughs> I couldn't answer that. I, I'm going to say that uh, and, I'll say that one for Andreas to answer. Um, uh, you know, I, I work really hard at my job. You know, I work really hard at recruiting. I work really hard at uh, producing a great on ice product. And I, and I think, uh, you know, my background with that and producing the kind of teams that I've produced over the years um, certainly was, I would guess it would be appealing to an ownership group, but I, I can't, I can't answer that question. Uh, Andres would have to answer that one. Right. But that definitely makes sense. And I will say that out of everyone I've talked to, FPHL executives, players, you're madly respected across the league. I don't know if you know that or not, but not one person I've spoke to has had something bad to say about you. Well, that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's war on the ice. Uh, and, and I mean, I have like, it's good that you said that because I have a lot of friends across the, the league that I think are friends and, you know, uh, I'm a gentleman off the ice. Um, when, when it's not game time, I have friends in other organizations, um, that, you know, uh, we can go out and have dinner afterwards, but when it's game time, I want to win the game. I, uh, we're not friends at that time. It's business. Exactly. For at least it was 60 minutes, you know, and it's the same for them. It's, you know, it's the same for them. And uh, let me ask you this. Are you currently in Binghamton? I am. Yeah. And yeah, what's going on right now? I know you're getting ready for the season, but what are your uh, duties before the season starts? Just so the fans know. Well, I just, I mean, I got here a week ago, so, uh, I hit the ground running. That's for sure. I mean, you know, there's so much to do. Like it's not just, okay, uh, I'm a coach and I show up and we start practicing and that's, that's all I do. I mean, as a team in the front office team as well, you know, we're getting apartments ready for the players. We're having cleaners come in and get them straightened out. We got the bus, making sure the bus is worthy for the road and making sure there's no discrepancies there. Excuse me, making sure we have, uh, you know, all the stuff prepared for, um, camp when it starts, like, do we have meals ready to go for lunch and dinner? Who are we going to? What's the schedule we're going to eat there and eat here? Um, you know, from that to making sure we have enough pucks and enough water bottles. And I mean, and we have a great, I mean, we have a, you know, a good, uh, um, equipment manager, but you know, uh, I'm a very dot your I cross your T guy. I want to know that everything's done. I want to see it. I want to, <laughs> I want to check it off my list. So I know it's done, but I mean, we got to go and make, we got to make a Sam's run in the next day or two to make sure we have plenty of bagels and peanut butter and jelly and Nutella and, you know, um, granola bars and Gatorade. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, right? Like there's a lot to do behind the scenes that no one ever gets to see. Um, but, uh, it's all about preparing to give these guys the best treatment they can have. If they're going to give you all they have. You got to give them all you have. Yep, exactly. Just like we were talking about off the air a minute ago, like you're not just a head coach. There's so much more involved behind the scenes that fans don't really get to see. That's kind of the point of the bench minor hockey series and these podcasts is to kind of talk to coaches and talk to staff members and, and make people realize like, yeah, I, I, I don't work from, you know, puck drop to, End of game. There's there's a lot that goes into it. So I yeah, appreciate you going in depth and telling us about it. Yeah, like, like the coaching is the easy part, right? Like that's that's the fun part. That that's why you're a coach. The practice and the games and and you know meet the fans and all. That's the fun part. But all the stuff that goes on behind it. I, I mean, I start today at seven a.m. and uh, you know it's seven p.m. right now, and I'm still going. Still got things to do. You know, I'm still working on plans for. 
uh, training camp? What are we, what are we doing? You know, what practice, what drills are we running? What are we trying to accomplish? And, you know, trying to start figuring out lines and how they're going to work together. So that, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of behind the scenes. That's for sure. And you still found time to talk to bench minor hockey. I really appreciate that boss. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on. So it just goes to prove that, you know, you're a busy guy, but you need the help of a staff. So you have to have a solid staff behind you. Um, how was the booster club situation there in Binghamton? Well, you know what? They're, they're great. Uh, it's funny you bring them up because I didn't realize how big it was uh, support wise. Um, um, I, geez, I know I'm going to, I can't remember the young, the young lady's name that came and seen, uh, came and saw me last week, but I have a meeting with the booster club on uh, Tuesday of next week. Uh, I'm going to go out and meet with the whole booster club and, have a chat with them and uh, yeah, but they're very supportive. You know, that they already said, Hey, anything you need, let us know. We'll cook, we'll clean, we'll, we'll drive the bus, you know, <laughs> be a, but they'll do just about anything for these players. And that's, that's great. Well, I'm happy you have that there. It's uh, definitely helpful to have a, a good team like that. Um, yeah. I know you brought up earlier about the, uh, the housing situation. Uh, what is housing like in Binghamton? I know it's different across the league, but can you explain kind of what Binghamton's is like? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the team owns an apartment complex. Um, and when I say complex, it's not five or six buildings. It's one building with uh, with eight apartments in it. So some are three bedrooms, some are two bedrooms. So everybody, every guy gets their own bedroom, um, you know, a, a living room and they have TVs and, you know, they have internet and all the stuff, all the stuff they need, the pots, pans, all that's there for them. So, uh yeah, I mean, that, that that's our housing. We have apartments so that they can, and we're uh, literally like 150 yards from a lake that's right right behind uh, mm-hmm. the apartment. So it's really good. They can go out there. They can hang out. They can walk down to the lake if they want to. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a really pretty setting uh, out, out where they're at. So well, That's great to hear. And that could also be another uh, recruiting tool, honestly, because I, I know other teams in the league, they, they aren't so fortunate to be in that situation. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, every, every team's a little bit different in how they go about this. Uh, we're not in this, like the housing's not in the city of Binghamton. It's out actually uh, 10 miles uh, north, I think um, in a town called Whitney point. So it's, it's a little bit of distance about 10 and 15 minute ride. Um, but it gets them out of the city and into a, a, a place where they can just go and relax and, and nobody, not that anybody would bother them, but you know, they won't bother anyone else either. So they're right. kind of to themselves. No, definitely. I know that you've only been there for a short period of time. I think you said you've been there a week so far, but what are your, some of your favorite things to do in the city so far or favorite places to eat for the visitors? I, I don't know. Well, you know, some attractions in Binghamton. I wish I could tell you, I haven't had much time to, to do that. I have had a little bit of time to ride. I mean, from going to point A to point B, I've, I've driven around the city a little bit. And uh, so that, that's a pretty cool town uh, that I can see. I really haven't, uh, you know, unfortunately, I haven't really been anywhere. I've just been trying to get ready for the season, you know. Yeah, I figured that was a silly question after you just told me what your day was like today. So <laughs> <laughs> disregard that question. Yeah, no worries. Um, let's uh, flip scripts over to um, like building a team. So first of all, what are some of your takeaways from the inaugural season last year? Uh, well, I guess the biggest takeaway is that there was tremendous talent here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think that the, again, the fans were excited to have this team and see this team play. And uh, so we were able to bring back some of that talent. Um, we had to make some moves earlier on and then, you know, during the off season to, to upgrade some things that I thought uh, probably needed to be upgraded. And, uh, and I don't say that lightly, like the guys here, not that they weren't good, just we needed certain things to fall into place to make what I feel is a true contender for us. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, over the course of the summer, I had, I saw that you resigned your core players like Kyle Powell, who's been defenseman of the year a few times now, Nikita Vashkin, Tyler Jurich, Gavin Yates, some big playmakers. Um, is it, was it a simple process to get them back or are there some negotiations involved? Well, I, I think there's always negotiations, you know, and what people, uh, what the fans and the, and the people that watch hockey 
really, again, behind the scenes, what you don't see is, you know, when a player leaves, it's not always that we want them to leave, right? Like sometimes they need a change of scenery themselves or they have a family issue or, um, you know, they just, they want more, more ice time or, or something like that. It could be a multitude of anything that, you know, that, and I don't say players are unhappy, just maybe they need something different. Like, uh, you know, my girlfriend lives in, I don't know, Georgia. So it makes sense for me to play in Columbus. What do you think coach? Can you get it done? And then you got to make moves, you know, you don't want these guys to be unhappy. You know, it's, it's a long road and uh, we don't want anyone to leave, but we always try to get value back for what we send. So, um, Mm -hmm. The negotiation process with a lot of these guys was, you know, um, I wouldn't say, uh, well, pretty much easy, pretty, pretty easy guys wanted to be back here and, you know, they know what they have here and they know that, or they think that they had a, a real opportunity to win last year and just fell a little bit short. I, I happen to agree with that. I think we fell a little bit short, but I think there's an ex, there was an excellent opportunity there last year. And I think we're building on that for this year, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Considering it was their very first, you know, year together, new club, new ownership, new everything. I don't think you could ask for a better season. I mean, yeah. not every team could be like the Vegas Golden Knights and, you know, make it the Stanley Cup your first try. But uh, yeah. overall, I think they had a phenomenal year. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let me switch this over real quick. And I knew I know that a lot of fans are asking questions about Morasti. So I'm not going to go in depth by no means, but the news that shocked the league. When you sign John Morasti, a tough guy with experience in the AHL, the LNH, and the KHL, how did the signing even come come to fruition? Um, so I coached with the Mississippi River Kings in the CHL with a guy named Kevin Killer Kaminsky, former NHLer, uh, enforcer for the Washington Capitals, and uh, we have been friends ever since. And you know, when I looked at the team last year. Um, I just felt like we needed some toughness uh, to help our goal scorers to create space for them, um, which is why we brought in Jake Schultz. You know, um, we lost a, a good player for that, but again, like I just said, sometimes that that happens where um, we get something that we need in in the building. So, with Jake Schultz, and then talking to Kevin Kaminsky one day, I was like, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm tough enough, and he's like, well, why don't you reach out to John and. Uh, you know, I was like, well, okay. <laughs> and I really didn't know where it would go. And I reached out to him one day and I was like, Hey John, uh, you know, I'm the head coach in Binghamton now. And, uh, you know, could really use you for some games, you know, you, you interested in playing. And he goes, well, do you want me to play or do you want me to play? And I was like, well, I really want you to play. And he's like, uh, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Sounds like fun. Uh, you know, he has history here. He has history in Syracuse, very familiar with the area. Um, I don't, you know, that guy is a true warrior on the ice, but probably the most, uh, res- probably has the most respect for everybody when he's off the ice. Just a true, uh, you know, uh, legend of the game and a true lover of the game and, 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 and the players and the fans. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how it came about. And, uh, you know, uh, I will tell you this, he will play a lot more games than people think. Um, and that's okay. You know, we're, we're not, uh, uh, I won't divulge how many games he is cause I do think it's still fluid, but, uh, I do think, uh, I think the fans are in for a real treat with him and Jake Schultz and a couple other fellas. Right. Absolutely. And, um, I know it was, it was kind of crazy when I saw the news that you had signed it because I was like, wow, like I grew up in Watertown, New York. I grew up a Syracuse Crunch fan. I had a Morassi jersey and I was like, am I seeing this right? Like, is this guy really playing in our league? And I don't know. That was well, that was you know, great news. Yeah, well, when I first did it, uh, when we first signed it and put it out, um, I had a mixed review. First off, every it, it exploded. It exploded so much that Morassi was getting texts back in Saskatchewan and sending them to me. He goes, look at this, look at this. And guys were just blowing up his phone and it, it was hilarious. And then the naysayers came out and they were like, Oh, this means going to turn into a bunch of fighting now. And it's going to be a goon league. And I, I, I happen to disagree with that. And the reason why I disagree with that is, is it's pretty simple with John Rasty or Jake Schultz on your bench. 
and if somebody gets frisky for the other side, are well, you really going to want to need to put him out there? Um, and, you know, you have to face that. Um, I don't think so. Um, and, you know, let's say he's not on the bench for a game. You're still in the back of your mind that he's with this team. And, uh, you know, and again, like much like Jake Schultz, I know he's not John Morasti, but he also has a name in, in ECHL hockey and, and above. And, you know, so uh, I'm not looking for a ton of fights. I'm mm-hmm. looking, I'm looking for a strong, physical, mental, tough team um, to allow our goal scorers to do what they do. All right, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, I'm excited that you guys brought him in. I think he's going to bring a whole different element to your game. And even Schultz, you just mentioned him. Like I thought he was a solid player in Columbus, and I couldn't believe they let him walk. Which you know, you just told me it could have been a personal reason. I'm not sure. But um, either way, I think you're benefiting on both ends, having both those players on your roster. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're both fantastic men, too. That's that's what's great about it. Like, they're just really outstanding people. Right. And um, uh, I'm not going to go in depth and, and ask much more questions about Morasti here, but uh, is the, the plan to just let him play home games there in Binghamton, or will he be going on any road trips at all? Well, that's still in the works. Um, I can tell works. you. Okay. I'll tell you that he's going to play um, a lot more games than people think uh, at home for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, for him to go on the road is a little bit different. We'll see. Um, I think if uh, I think if need be, that could be worked out. Okay. If you need cool. him to go, I think that can be done. Um, but I'm worried about protecting our home ice first. Absolutely, it's all you can do. Um, and uh, as far as any other players, I, on paper, you guys have a solid roster right now. Are there plans to bring in anyone else? Uh, well, I, I'll just say that, you know, we'll be starting camp here shortly. Um, we've brought in, like you said, a lot of different different types of players. Um, and uh, I think it's always going to be a fluid team, uh, meaning that uh, if something's not working, we will find a way to fix it. Um, if that means personnel changes or, you know, uh, just system changes or anything like that, we'll make the changes. Um, I can't, I have a list as long as my arm of guys that want to come here at all different levels of hockey. Um, we all know what's going to happen here. Once the SPHL and the ECHL starts, same thing with the NHL and AHL, the NHL pushes to the AHL, the AHL pushes to the coast and so on and so on. And next thing you know, there's a plethora of guys out there uh, available. Um, uh, lucky for me, I have a lot of guys that I know that I used to coach with or I coached in the ECHL and, and in the SPHL. So, uh, you know, could it change? It, it could. Um, uh, there are a couple other fellows that I don't feel um, it's right to say their names right now, only because mm-hmm. they're in different situations uh, at higher leagues, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to chuck them under a bus like that. Like, if it doesn't work out, will they end up here? Probably, but uh, right now, I wish them the very best at their uh, at their tryouts and their camps that are you know a couple weeks away still. So, yeah, absolutely. I know that uh, you know even a lot of Fed guys they like to go up into the ECHL tryouts, and you know obviously we wish them the best. Um, we hope they come back eventually, but you know you. That's the point of these developmental leagues is to let them go to the next level and, you know, try it out and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we have a few guys up in the coast right now that were on the team last year. Matthew Bossard's up there um, in the ECHO. A newcomer coming in, Ben St. Onge, um, former junior player of mine, as at a ECHO camp, was invited. And then we have, you know, Tyson Kirkby, Sam Turner, Colin Fitzgerald, uh, those three guys are at NA camps or SPHL camps. So, I mean, anything can happen. And, you know, I got to be honest, like, uh, yeah, selfishly, I'd love to have them all back. But unselfishly for their careers, I hope they do great. I hope they make it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like, as a fan, you know, you miss them, but you wish them the best. You want them to succeed, move on to the next level. That's the point of this. Developmental Absolutely. leagues, we get them up there and hope they perform. and. Play for a higher team, right? Absolutely. So let's switch over to uh, the arena. 
when uh, I ran a poll in the summertime, I, I contacted, I think it was 60 players total. 40% of them said that Visions Veterans Memorial Arena was the greatest environment to play in. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm sure I'm excited about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I had the benefit of coaching down in Columbus, and they have a great arena and a great setup down there. Um, you know, uh, I absolutely, when I walked into the Vision Center, it was, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's next level, you know, for mm-hmm. sure. Next level. And, uh, you know, that's not to sh- rain on anyone else's parade. Like I said, Columbus has a great setup too. Our setup to me is just like second to none. You know, uh, we have a gym that's inside of our, uh, locker room it's attached to it should i say but it's a full gym so we can work out right there we don't have to go anywhere it's right there um you know we have the hot and cold tubs in the in in the shower area and so we have a full giant bathroom with you know everything you could think of in there um we have a player's lounge with tvs and um drink uh what do you call refrigerators big giant like coke and pepsi refrigerators Mm -hmm. um Probably shouldn't say Coke or Pepsi because I don't know. I don't think they have either name on it, but just for an idea of what it looks like, it has those, you know, those type of refrigerators in there. And we have them throughout um, a, a locker room that is huge, just absolutely hum- with all the amenities. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and and then you got the fan base and, you know, it's, it's very well kept. It's very clean, uh, at least the parts that I've seen. I mean, I've, nobody's been in there, so. Uh, I, I guess Walker Hayes is playing there this weekend, so I imagine uh, Saturday or Sunday it'll be uh, pretty, uh, probably peanut, uh, you know, popcorn all over the place. But uh, they they do a really good job of running it. Right. I wonder if uh, is Visions Veterans Arena and First Arena kind of having a competition with country artists back and forth because one week it's Justin Moore over here, the next week it's Hunter Hayes over here. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I don't have anything to do with any of that, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I know, like, uh, I would say both of those towns are trying to do the same thing, right? Like, the, that's the thing to do in town, and they're trying to bring in good talent for people to have something to do. And, uh, uh, you know, I from what I heard the other day, I, it's pretty close to sold out here for Walker Hayes or Hunter Hayes. I don't know his name. Something Hayes. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome news for Mr. Hayes, whichever one that may be. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh let me talk about this rivalry real quick. So last year, Watertown and Binghamton was arguably the most exciting rivalry to watch in the FPHL. Um, actually, when we ran a poll, we asked who's going to have the best rivalry this year. And they said Binghamton and Watertown again. Do you think that Binghamton and Watertown is going to have the same ri- rivalry as last year? Or do you think it's going to kind of switch over to Binghamton and Elmira? Um, I, you know what? I don't know. We won't, we, won't really, we won't really know that until we get going, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, we start out with Elmira, you know, home and home. So, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. I, I think uh, every year is a little bit different um, mm-hmm. as far as who that rival is going to be. And I really think it just depends on how much you see a team uh, as to, I mean, like last year there were seven teams in the league. This year there's ten teams. So, Will the rivalry switch between to us and Danbury or Danbury and, and Watertown? I, who, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Watertown's a good, you know, they had a great product last year. You can't, you know, can't deny that. And uh, But we'll see where it goes. Absolutely. And um, speaking of Watertown and Binghamton, moving forward and building your brand, um, you know, last year you guys made playoffs. I say you guys, but Binghamton made playoffs with a 0.531 win percentage. They led the league in attendance with over 3,000 fans a game. How do you build off that moving forward? Well, I mean, uh, you know, the front office staff is surely out there um, working the phones every day. I mean, I was I, I go up at least once a day and talk to them, and, you know, they're constantly on the phones getting out there and uh, to the community. I think once we get into town, you know, having the players out in the community and building that excitement of what's about to happen again, I think that I think it grows. Um, um, I don't have the exact numbers or anything like that, nor nor would I, I don't think. But um, I will tell you that I know that they're doing better this year 
mm-hmm. a lot better this year with season tickets than they did last year. And so um, it has picked up um, to what extent I, 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 re- I don't know. It's great news to hear that at least. I mean, if you're already yeah. past your number from last season and typically inaugural seasons are the best seasons. Yeah. You no, know, it's something new. It's something exciting. And you know, you're building yeah. off that already. So. Yeah. I just think it shows that the product, they enjoyed what they had on the ice last year. Right. And that actually leads me to my next question. And what makes the Binghamton Black Bear brand unique? Is, is there something that stands out that not other team, you know, other teams don't do that you guys do? Or do you think it's just that sense of community? Yeah. I mean, I, I think like, like I said earlier, like the tradition and the rich hockey history of this town, um, you know, not every, every team in our mar- or in our league has that. Um, I think this is one of those very special places that has hockey has had hockey for quite some time. And, you know, mm-hmm. 50 years of hockey here in Binghamton. I mean, there's a lot of hockey that's been played here over these years and some, some incredible teams and some incredible players have been through this. So, I mean, I think that lends itself to, you know, why Binghamton is the way it is, you know, and guys want to play here is because of that. I mean, there's other markets in our league that certainly have a history as well, but I don't think any of them are as strong as a history because of how long this history was here. Mm -hmm. You know, other teams have had history like, uh, I mean, Biloxi has had a great history of hockey down there in the SPHO, and, you know, um, Columbus has good history too, but I don't think any of it uh, surpasses the amount of years that Binghamton has had uh, pro hockey here. Yeah, I definitely couldn't agree more. Um, I know that I took a lot of backlash when I said that uh, Binghamton has the best market in the league. I, I know Columbus fans weren't too happy with me when I ranked, you know, Binghamton is number one, but it's, I think it's the truth. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's a lot to be said for a lot of these organizations in this league. You know, Jeff Krupp and Jay Krupp down there in Columbus and Jerome Bichard do a fantastic job of, uh, of – they did an amazing job of building their brand down there. Um, and, yeah, I mean, they have great fans there, and it's it's got history. And, and I'm sure, like, Biloxi will do a good job. I know Danbury does a good job year after year. So, I mean, and that's, you know – uh, you know, I think even the small market teams that really put in the effort like Watertown has, you know, they have their little niche that works for them. And I'll tell you what, one thing you can bet on is every league, every uh, team in this league, their markets, their fans are 100 percent their fans. Um, and they're going to do everything they can protect that name of their team. And, uh, you know, that, that's awesome. That, that's really great. I'm happy for all of them. Yeah, as am I. I know that, uh, you know, it, it's crazy. You know, when I first started watching, we, well, we have Berkshire Battalion and Danville Dashers, like these small market teams. And now we're playing in arenas with thousands of people. So it's crazy to see the league grow this much. I, you know, I'm happy it has grown, but it's just, it's exciting. Well, I'll it, tell you that. It, it, it is exciting. And I think the league's done a good job of, you know, keeping the small market teams um, going the way that they, the ownership of those small market teams, keeping them going. Because uh, quite frankly, I mean, they, they are the foundation of what started this league, those small market teams. Uh, I coached in this league the very first year it was around. And uh, we, we all had buildings like a Watertown or, or a Delaware or, you know, Danville. You know, it, it was, they were all like that, but they were all back in the house too. So. Yeah. A lot of these, um, I don't want to say newer fans, but, you know, fans from Binghamton, fans from Mississippi and, you know, Winston-Salem, they weren't around to see those small market teams where we had, what, maybe 150, 200 fans a game. Like, these were small numbers, and now we're at two, 3,000. So it just goes to show how much this league has grown. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Carolina does a good job down there, too, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um the closest FPHL team to me is Winston Salem, so I mean, I'll I'll go check out the Thunderbirds a few times this year. And uh, we are running a little bit short on time, but so let me switch over to a couple of questions that fans have real quick. Um, Frank wants to know what can we expect to see on the ice this season. I guess that's uh, a little open-ended question, but yeah, uh, 
Well, Frank, I, I and the rest of Bears Nation, I think you can expect to see a uh, fast, hard-hitting, physical, um, smart team uh, getting up and down the ice, uh, a little bit more um, uh, systematic, like we're going to have some systems that we're running a little bit deeper so that we can uh, – you know, we can make changes on the fly, but I think most of all, bigger, stronger, faster is what I like to go with. Uh, we're going to be bigger, we're going to be stronger, and we're going to be faster than we were last year. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll be physical. Uh, we're not going to get pushed around, and I don't think any team is going to get pushed around, but I want to make sure that, uh, you know, that, uh, again, our goal scorers have room to move, and uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to bang bodies, that's for sure. We will be a physical team. Well, you just answered Peter's question. Are you going to be physical? There you go, Peter. Um, And Noah wants to know, what are your expectations off the ice this year? Which you kind of just explained that as well. You guys already, you know, have more season ticket sales than last year. So moving in the right direction. Well, and you actually, during the podcast, you already answered Michael's question too. How much is Marassi going to play? There you go. When he's needed. Well, our, our number one goal is to bring the cup back to Binghamton. Uh, I know every team is out to do that, um, but, uh, you know, we're going to put in the time. We have guys that are 1 billion percent committed, especially last year's roster guys are 100 percent committed on bringing that uh, commissioner's cup back here to Binghamton this year. So that's, that's, our, that's our goal, and uh, we're not going to stop till we get there. Um, and we know there's going to be a lot of hard battles along the way, but uh, mm-hmm. that's where we're headed. All right. Black Bear Nation, you heard it here first. Um, we have two more fan questions. Uh, one comes from Daniil. He wants to know the statuses of Kirkby, Buslard, and Fitzgerald. I believe you said that they're all at ECHL, SPHL camps. Right. Yeah, they're all at those camps right now. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, Buslard's at uh, an East Coast, the Wichita Thunder. Um, Kirkby is in Peoria, and who was the other one? Kirkby, Bosslard, and Fitzgerald. Oh, Fitzy is at uh, where is he at? Birmingham. Um, so, you know, hey, you know what? When you have good players, good players make moves, and uh, you know, you can't let, expect them to stay around. Um, I will tell you that if any of them don't make their uh, teams that they're with right now, we will welcome them all back with open arms back here. Great to hear that. Solid players right there. Uh, and the last question comes from Gary. He wants to know, will the first power play unit be Jurich, Avashkin, Yates, Powell, and Schultz? Or is that going to be to you know to be determined at a later date? Yeah, I can't, I can't give that. that uh, I'm a very, uh, I guess, old school coach. Well, maybe not so old school. I think everybody does it the same way. That's a, that's a, that's a privilege, and it has to be earned mm-hmm. through hard work. And uh, now they are all of them are great goal scorers um, to put them all on one. I'll say this to put them all in one power play would not be smart uh, only mm-hmm. because we have to, uh, the pieces of the puzzle have to go together correctly. And uh, you don't want to put all your guys on one power play um, and not saying that they're all the guys, but that specific group all in one power play. Um, if I was coaching against just one unit, I don't have to worry about the other unit, you know? So I would say that uh I can't tell you exactly who's what right now. Uh, will they be on the power play? Maybe. Um, it's earned, though. But yep. uh, certainly great goal scorers there that he mentioned, all of them. Right. Couldn't agree more. Um, I know when I uh, you know, was in Watertown, we had uh, Powell and Jurich and Yates all together. Lethal. They were dangerous. They're a great group of guys off the ice and on the ice. Yep. I mean, it could happen. I'm not saying that it won't. I'm right. just saying that way. I mean, it's way too early for me to say uh, what's going to happen there. And, you know, with the, especially with the new group of guys coming in. Yes. I know the first thing that everybody would say is, well, they gel, they played together before. Yeah. But sometimes guys want a little space from that too. And they want to, we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we have the right chemistry for everything going on just because they play that way, you know, in Watertown doesn't mean they would be able to bring that same thing here now. Um, you know I mean? As together as one unit power play unit, but uh, separate them. And now you got depth of scoring on both lines. 
power Absolutely. play. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Um, I did miss one question. This topic is kind of a, a hot topic right now. Ryan Marker. I know that Delaware hasn't officially released him yet, or if they're going to, I, I don't know. But uh, if they were to release him, or if they were entertaining trades, would you be interested? Well, um, there's nothing for me to say with that because he has been in suspended indefinitely according to the transactions that's on the FHL website. Um, mm-hmm. I just saw that a couple of days ago. So, I mean, I mean, Ryan Marker is a special talented player for sure. And yeah, I mean, yeah, well, of course we'd be interested in getting him, but so would every other team in this league, it, mm-hmm. you know, that's how special he is. But at its, as it stands right now, um, you know, uh, Delaware, and, well, he is suspended indefinitely for whatever reason down there in Delaware. That's, you know, not my wheelhouse, not my team. Um, I'm sure the ownership has their reasons for what they do. Um, uh, I'll just say that, yeah, I mean, he's a special player. I, I hope that someday they can get things worked out. Right. Absolutely. You don't want to see a, a kid like him, you know, miss a season for something silly, but like you said, he's a special talent. We got to see him in someone's Jersey this year. So yeah. hopefully they get that straightened out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wish him, I wish him the very best of luck. Absolutely. Um, so just side note, your home opener starts with the Elmira mammoth on October 14th. You guys are at home visions, veterans, Memorial arena, 7 p.m. puck drop. Um, we are just about out of time. So is there anything you want to say to Black Bear Nation or to Benchminer Hockey? Uh, well, uh, to, to Black Bears Nation, I can't wait to meet you folks. Um, please don't be a stranger. If you see me, say hi, you know, shake a hand, you know, uh, strike up a conversation. As long as I'm not going on the ice, uh, you know, for, for a game. But uh, but any other time, uh, you know, I welcome you guys out anytime to our practices to say hi and you know, meet the players, meet myself, and uh, to bench uh, bench minor hockey. Thank you so much for having me on. I think you guys are doing a great job covering the SPHL and the uh, FHL, and uh, you know all the hockey in between. All right. Well, we really appreciate that. Um, just a reminder to fans. You know, if you follow the Binghamton Black Bears, make sure you follow them on all their social media platforms. Make sure you follow Bench Minor Hockey on our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Apple Podcasts to check out all these episodes. Thank you so much, Mr. Gary Gill, for you know coming on for episode three. And episode four, actually, ironically, will feature Mr. Jay Croup of the Columbus River Dragons. Oh, so boo. we look forward to speaking with him. <laughs> all the boos start happening. <laughs> boo J <Jay> Group. <laughs> well, thanks again, Gary. Really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you.